Still though. Um, and I'm just excited to see what God is doing in this season. I'm gonna say amen. Amen. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't know why you come to church. And that's something that we have to really, really ground right now. And that's something the realization that I had to ground is why do I even go to church? Most of us we come to church because either our wives are telling to uh, us to, uh, our marriage is on the line. Um, we definitely need a change of life. We need restoration. We need spiritual restoration. So you have to find your reason why you're even here tonight. If you want to grow and be successful in your relationship with Christ, you have to know and understand why. And and with that, I, I want to pray and 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 I want to. I just I just want you know. I, again, I'm grateful, but I I just I really believe that God is doing something with the man. Amen. And I'm excited to be here tonight. So let's pray. Father, we love you. We come before you tonight. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. God, we know that without you, we're nothing. We understand that completely. We're here only merely by your grace. God, many of us shouldn't be here. Many of us, God, should be either incarcer incarcerated or six feet under. Lord, but today, Lord, we find ourselves clean, washed, yeah. with a job, with a family, with kids. Our bellies have been fed. And God, we can only thank you for that. No one else. And today, Lord, even though the enemy had tried to destroy who we are, has, has tried to destroy our purpose, has tried to destroy our callings, Lord, you've never allowed it because you will never shame us. And Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the men that are congregated here. And we believe, God, that this, these numbers of men, God, will multiply. And Lord, you have a great calling and a great purpose for each and every individual man that is here. Lord, to take this message, Lord, back home and marinate, and Lord, and go home and reestablish home, and reestablish what you're doing in, the, in everyone's lives here. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. 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 Are you excited to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. And you clap louder for the Dodgers. Are you excited to be in the house of God tonight? See, when, whenever you clap and you're like, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. You know what? I, I, mentally, that tells you that you're really not open. Mm. But when you clap and you get excited, something happens in, in, in your mental state that you're like, man, I'm, I'm ready to receive whatever's going to be behind the pulpit. And it's not just because it's me, right? But it's just because we, we want you to receive whatever God has for you. Amen? Amen. Um, so, you know, Pastor Mario is throwing his, you know, his shots at me. It's cool, you know? I, I just had to, you know, take my 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 vacation time like he did. So I was like, all right. I had to piggyback back on his vacation time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, marathon runner. Marathon runner, right? Uh, Praise the Lord. Um, you know, but I, I'm excited for what God has for us in 2019. Um, and I thank God, you know, for the men that have come and, and really take hold of, uh, you know, what God is doing. You know, Pastor Robert, um, you know, uh, Brother Gerardo, uh, the, the, you know, Moses, the men have stepped up, and it's beautiful to see, Brother Jonathan, it's beautiful to see what God is doing in your guys' lives, how God is, is developing you to become leaders of leaders, and that's always been our prayer. God, allow us to build leaders of leaders, allow us to be builders, and not just bottleneck the ministry and bottleneck what God has for us. No, we want to continue to grow. It doesn't stop because one man is here. No, we got to remove that man and, and, and let other men raise up. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole plan. So my, my message today is, is uh, it, you know, is the power of restoration. And I understand this is that I don't know if you've ever hurt someone unintentionally. Ah, right. Mm. I, I, I said something to you, I did something to you unintentionally, but I really hurt you, and I really didn't know. And sometimes we, we live life as men. We live life, you know, we, 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 we could brush things off and like nonchalant kind of thing, you know, like whatever, and, and move on. And think that the waters have been settled and, you know, everything's like, oh, hey, you know what, you're over here, I'm over here, I'm good, I'm good. Like Pastor Mike was saying, you know, yesterday. Yeah, you good? You good? I'm good. I'm good. All right, bye. See you later. <laughs> and, and say that the issue has been settled. Yeah. But deep down inside, you really know that you really need to make true peace. Mm. 
And sometimes we live life and we continue to walk and, 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 and do business as usual, continue to go to work and continue to live life business as usual, continue to come to church and continue to, you know, raise our holy hands and, and live life as business as usual. But deep down inside there's a hurt, there's something inside of your heart that say, man, I really need to get rid of this. And just because of pride and just because of ego, we keep living like this because we say the famous line is, I don't know how to even apologize. Wow. No one's ever apologized to me, and I don't know how to apologize to someone else. And we use crutches like that. We use excuses of that way. In my marriage, I don't apologize. Either my wife or my kids apologize to me, and that's it. Man, I'm sorry for you, bro, because you're going to live a long, miserable life. Mm. But we live life in regret. Sometimes we even fall out of relationships. Have you ever fallen out of a relationship with someone that you really love, no. you really care for, you really look up to? You've fallen out of a relationship with that person because of something that you did unintentionally, something that you did not, not really thinking that you were going to do that. In the book of John, chapter 21, verse 15, it says like this. Has it been a while since I've been back here? Man. And this is after Jesus resurrected. He resurrected from the cross and he appears to, to, to the disciples, Peter. And, and he says like this, he says, so when they said, when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, he said to him, feed my lambs. I'll go to 16. It says, he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. So first he said what? Feed. Feed. Second he said, tend. Verse 17. He says, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved at this time because you said to him a third time, do you love me? Like, are you questioning my love? Have you ever questioned someone's love? And this is where Peter was saying, man, I'm, do, I mean, are you questioning my love for you? He said, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. So what was the first thing that he said? Feed. Feed. And then the second? Ten. And the third? Feed. Feed. Feed, tend, feed. Feed, tend, feed. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed your home, tend your home, feed the church. But sometimes we get caught up and we don't know what we're doing. What, 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 what's even my purpose? What's even my calling? What's even, what am I supposed to do? All I know is that, man, I'm, I'm here because, you know, God gave me a second chance. But this is, this is a second, you know, you know why, why God, why Jesus told Peter, he asked him three times, do you love me? Hmm. How many times did Peter deny Jesus? Three times. Three times. This is the power of restoration. See, Peter is crazy. Would you say amen? Amen. I, yeah. I, who knows who Peter was in the Bible? Raise yeah. your hand, please. All right, Peter. Oh, who, who was Peter? Peter was what? The rock. Huh? The rock. Peter was a rock. Okay. Quick temper. Quick temper. Peter, Peter was crazy. Peter was one of those crazy guys. Peter was one of the guys that if you went out and, and somebody looked at you wrong and he'd be the first one, hey, bro, what's up, fool? What, you want some, you know? He, he was that guy. He was a guy that took out the sword whenever that, that, that one guy, some, you know, he was coming, that one soldier was coming to Jesus. And, and, and what did Peter do? He said, cut his ear off. Like, no, what, who are you messing with? Don't, you can't approach my circle that way. If you come and approach my circle, man, you're going to get hurt. That's who Peter was. Peter was a little bit radical, would you say amen? Amen. Peter was a little crazy, would you say amen? Amen. And this is who Peter was. He was a little radical. He was a little crazy. But yet, he was the one that said, man, Jesus, if you leave, you know, Jesus was telling, telling the disciples, look, I'm going to die. And Peter said, no, you're not going to die. Quit saying that you're going to die. 
He said, and then Peter would always tell Jesus, I'm going to be with you no matter what happens. I'll go to jail for you. I'll die for you if, I, if it takes for me to die for you. That's how Peter would talk. That was his language. Mm. He was sold out. But yet, whenever the first time when it came, it was he was the first one to deny Jesus. Mm. It's crazy. It's crazy how we can say we love someone, but yet deny them the next second. Mm. Yeah. Amen. That's crazy. Because this is what happens, is that you can know you can know Jesus, but you can't have a relationship with Jesus. There's something totally different of knowing who Jesus was. See, in the in the book, I'm getting ahead of my message here. Hello, somebody. I'm excited. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, in, in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, it says like this. It says, when Jesus came into the region of uh, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who, who do men say that I am, the son of man, man I am? In it, 14, it says, so he says, uh, some say John the Baptist, Elijah, others say Jeremiah, that, or the son of the prophets. Keep going. He said to them, but who, who do you say I am? Verse 16, it says, Simon Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Now trip, trip on this. Did Peter have a relationship with Jesus? I'm asking you a question. You can say yeah. yes or no. Amen. Yes. Did Peter have a relationship with Jesus? Yes. Yes. Did, did Peter even know Jesus? Yes. He knew of Jesus. He knew of Jesus. He didn't have a relationship with Jesus. See, who revealed this to him? The Father in heaven. Even though that he didn't have a relationship, God will speak to us even though if we fall out of relationship with heaven, heaven, Heavenly Father. God will still speak to you if you fall out of relationship with Heavenly Father. No matter where you're at in life, no matter if you go down to the bottom of the pit, down to the bottom of the sea, no matter where you're at in life, if your life is destructive, busted, and whatever it is, God will always be there for you, no matter what situation you are in life. And I hear Peter was saying, Peter recognized that it's not me who is demonstrating this to me, but it is my Abba Father that's saying, you are showing me that you are the Christ. So sometimes you can know who Jesus is here, head knowledge. You can know who Jesus is, but you don't know who Jesus is. So whenever Peter said, man, I will die for you, he was saying, I'm going to die for you. He was speaking from here. He wasn't speaking from here. This is why it was so easy for him to deny him right afterwards. Wow. Amen. Because whenever you speak from here, you're real quick to deny. It's, it's not something that, man, I really want it. I really want this new life. I really want to serve God. I really want my marriage to be where it needs to be. I really want my children to be where they need to be. I really want my finances where they need to be. I really want my business where it needs to be. I've only taken my family this far. I've only taken my marriage this far. I've only taken my children this far. I've only taken my business this far. But it's up to us when we say, you know what, it's enough about you trying and you got to not start trusting and saying, Lord, look, no more, no more just knowing Jesus. But now it's time to know Jesus. Mm. It's not about, a, 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 it's more not about a revelation who Jesus is, but it's about the relationship who Jesus is. Amen. Right here, you can have a revelation all you want. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. Yeah. But do you relationship Jesus? That's what makes a difference. That's why people say, man, you're different. People don't say you're different because there's a revelation of Jesus in your life. You know what revelation is? It's just head knowledge. Relationship is deep down in here. Relationship is here. People, that's what people start saying. You're different. Mm. Hey, man, well, hold on, hold on. You used to be, you used to talk like this. You used to be this way. I used to see you over here. I used to see you over there. But now there's something different. You, your wife starts to say, man, babe, you know what? I, I thank God because you're, now you're changing. You're, you don't speak the way you used to speak. You don't talk the way you used to talk. Man, you're more of a patient man. And some of you long for that. Long for, you know what? Not the acknowledgement, but long for, for the maturity in your relationship with Christ that God is doing the work in you. God is doing the work in you. It's not nobody else, but it's God. We can know Jesus all we want, but we need to have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Can I get the men to say amen? Amen. Man, I jumped all over the place. And it's crazy because look at it in verse 22. 
of that same chapter, and I already mentioned this, how Peter would deny Jesus. Peter took him to a side and he rebuked Jesus. <laughs> hey, hey, Jesus, come here, come here and talk to you. Right? I, need, I mean, imagine that. And it's like when I think of this is when I think of look, Jose, you know, rebuking Pastor Mike. Like, <laughs> come here, Pastor Mike. You, know, you can't be watching the drugs like this. You got to watch them like this. <laughs> said, far be from it, you Lord. This shall not happen to you. You know, Peter was radical, man. Peter was radical. That ain't going to happen to you. It, it's like if someone you know get hits with, you know, a, a terminal illness. And you're like, nah, man, that ain't going to happen to you. Mm. You don't know what you go through inside when you know that a loved one gets hit with terminal illness. But, you, but because you can see, you can see the sickness deteriorating the body. Mm. And, and, it's, and it's a crazy imagination happening in your mind. And, and you see the deterioration of the body. And like, oh man, and that hurts. No one knows and no one understands what you're going through. And as men, guess what happens? We shelter those feelings. We shelter all that emotion. We shelter all that. And guess what? We lash out. And when we lash out, oh man, we start hurting people. When we lash out, oh man, our wife gets our wrath. When we lash out, our children gets the wrath. When we lash out, our, our employees or our co-workers gets the wrath. And you know what else? When we lash out, our calling gets affected. Mm. Our purpose gets affected. Because now, now you're full of shame. Then, man, why am I talking this way? Man, why am I thinking this way? Now you feel like you're not adequate enough. Now you feel like you're not you're, you're not good enough to fulfill the call of God over your life. Now you feel like, man, I don't even want to mess with that, man. I, I, you know what? I, I sin so much, man, that I don't even want to go to church, man. I sin so much that I don't even want to get on the worship team. Man, I sin so much that I don't even want to be an usher no more, man. I sin so much that I know that God is frustrated with me because I frustrated God's grace. God's grace, man. Let me tell you something. The enemy brings shame. Grace, the grace of God tells us shame. Shame off. Amen. The enemy brings shame, but the grace of God tells shame to shame off. And this is where the Bible says that where sins abound, grace abounds even the more. The more you sin, the more God's going to say, no, look, man, I'm doing a work in your life. Don't continue to sin, but I'm doing a work in your life. I know what I have in you. I know that there's something good in you. I know that you are called for a cause greater than yourself. But why do you continue to look at your shortcomings and not look at my powerful being and who I am in you? Mm, I'm not. I'm speaking to men tonight. I'm speaking to men that say, you know what, man? I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I'm tired of being frustrated because I'm frustrated. Just like you're tired of living paycheck to paycheck, you need to be tired of your spiritual life being in the same situation. Man, I'm tired of being in the same situation, in the same revolving door spiritually, in the same revolving door with my marriage, in the same revolving door with my children. I'm tired of that. What do I need to do so that can change? Mm. What do I need to do? What, is, what, what do you need to do? Is stop knowing Jesus and start having a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Many times we can come and we, you know, we can play church. Hello. Come on. We can play church. But playing church ain't going to get you where you need to get. Mm. Playing church ain't going to get you where you need to get. You know what's going to get you where you need to get? It's knowing that the grace of God is sufficient. Let's give a little clap on for you. Amen. Have you ever heard of a man's man? What's a man's man? It's a Bible study. You can talk that. What's a man's man? Macho man. Macho man. What's a man's man? Huh? I'm a man's man. What's a man's man? Explain. Give the details. What's a man's man? Huh? Gratitude. Gratitude. What else? What's a man's man? He's upright in character, right? He's, he's a stand-up kind of guy. He's a man's man. Hey, that's a man's man, man. He has, you know, he has good qualities. He, he, man, he's a sharp individual. Hey, he keeps his word. He has integrity. That's a man's man. Hey, man, th th that's a man's man. Man, man he, but, 
we're not looking for man's man no more. Because a man's man is good for society. Right. But we're looking for men of God. Amen. We're looking for men of God. What's the, what's the difference? Is that a man's man can be upright here and the outside, but inside he's dying. Mm. A man of God can be upright here and inside he's rejoicing. We're looking for men of God. We're not looking for men's men. Men's men, the conversion from men's men to men of God are like this. Mm. I like this. Why? Because they get it. They're grateful. They understand that if it wasn't for something else or someone else, that they wouldn't be where they're at. That's a man's man. And when you understand that, man, there's something greater in my life that I can, I can really pour out. I can really do. You understand that God has a calling for you as a man of God, not a man's man. A man's man is stand up for society. But what is a, man's, a man of God? A man of God is one that says, you know what? I'm going to take hold of my purpose. I'm going to take hold of my calling. I'm going to take hold of the vision. And I'm going to make sure that we fulfill it. I'm going to say that one more time. A man, a man of God is one that's going to take hold of his purpose, take hold of his calling, and take hold of the vision. Amen. Why? Because when you're a man of God, you seek God. And sometimes you don't see God give you the whole plan, the whole, the whole rundown. I, I, I mean, how many like to, to, you know, to get down and, and, and like to know the whole rundown? Like, okay, this is plan A, plan B, plan boom, 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 boom. This is all the steps, right? This, these are all the steps. I like that. I like being organized. That's my technical side right there. Like, boom, I, I, want, I want to run it this way. But, but, but here's the crazy thing. Mm. Is that when, whenever you come to Christ, that system is in there. <laughs> that technical side says, God says, leave that up to me. Come on. I'll do that. Amen. All I need you to do is show up, and I'll do the rest. If you stick, stick it long enough, you're going to see me fulfill that purpose in your life. If you stick it long enough, you're going to start to see, man, God, I'm still, I'm still here. I'm not going nowhere. I'm still here. I'm not going nowhere. I'm still here. I'm not going nowhere. And what does God do? God starts to just develop things and unfold things in your life. How many can say amen? Amen. The power of restoration is this, is just as many times as Peter denied Christ was the same amount of times that Jesus asked Christ if he loved me. It's crazy. Why did, why did Jesus ask him three times? We know because Peter denied him three times. Each time Jesus asked Peter was to cancel and to settle debts every time he denied him. Mm. He denied me once, settled. You denied me twice, settle. You denied, denied me three times, settle. So what happened in Peter's life after he was restored? What happened in Peter's life? The book of Acts chapter 5 says this. Chapter 5 verse 15. So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them in the beds and couches. That at least the shadow of Peter. Of who? Peter. Of Peter. Passing by midnight fell on some of them. What were, what was happening here? What was happening here? He was walking in his authority. But if it wasn't for the power of restoration. See, sometimes you think that God will never give you the time to say, I'm sorry. Jesus gave Peter the time to restore him with the Savior. Mm. I don't know who God is for you, but he's my Savior. I don't know what he has done for you, but he's my Savior. I know that where I would be if it wasn't for Jesus. But I don't know if you really know where you would be if it wasn't for Jesus. For me, he's my savior. For me, he's my everything. For me, he's a God that continues to shower me with his love. For me, he's my God that if, it, if he wouldn't take it, uh, he didn't bore the sins, my sins, then I would be the one that would be born, you know, uh, paying for that debt. But because he paid my debt, I'm grateful for him. Amen. And whenever he said, look, I'm, I'm restoring you. 
When he was restored, when he was had the opportunity to say I'm sorry, when he was when he had the opportunity to restore the relationship with Jesus, and let me tell you, man of God, that God is going to give you the opportunity to restore, to mend with that relationship with your wife, with your spouse, with with your son, with your daughter. God will give you the opportunity to mend and to heal. Why? Because it's only when you mend that you can be powerful and effective. It's all, listen to this. It's only when you commend that you can be powerful and effective. You can't go out and perform miracles if you have issues inside. You can't go out and love, live, live life at 100% for God if you have issues in life. It won't happen. Amen. You can want it all you want, but it's not going to happen. Why does the Bible say, uh, bless your mother and father, your father and mother? Why, why is that even there? Because if you have strife with your parents, anything in life, for whatever reason, it won't you won't succeed. It's crazy. I asked for forgiveness for my mother. Pastor Mike asked for forgiveness with his father. And what happened? Boom! Relationship, his business, everything in his life took off. Why? Because that's, that was healing. That was the power of restoration. And sometimes we need to go Hallelujah. ask for forgiveness and restore. If we want to go to the next level, sometimes that hidden thing, that hidden secret that only God knows, that hidden hurt that only God knows, you have to ask for forgiveness because that's what's holding you up from going to the next level. Amen. Right here, Peter, you know what Peter was doing? Peter's, Peter's shadow was healing people. Peter's shadow was, was restoring people. Why? Because he had the power of restoration with his Savior. Whenever you and I, as men of God, when we have the power of relationship with our Lord and Savior, guess what's going to happen? Just by walking by, people are going to recognize, man, there's something different about you. I want to know what you're drinking. I want to know what kind of cool that you're drinking because there's something about you that, you're, that is different. There's something about you, man, that you're not just a man's man, but you're, you're, you're there's something greater. You're a man of God. And believe me, the community will notice. Amen. The community will notice who you are. Sometimes I go out to eat to certain restaurants. You're like, hey, aren't you a pastor? I'm like, oh, shit. Yes, I am. How do you know me? Right? I, oh, I, just, I, I, I just, I thought I'd seen you. I thought, and then, oh, hey, aren't you that one preacher? Like, yeah, hey, yes, I am. <laughs> How do you know me? Well, I, I just, I know you from somewhere. But it, so the community will notice who you are. Amen. Amen. But it's the power of restoration, my friend, man of God. Tonight, if there's one message that I can give you, is restore, number one, your relationship with God. Not know who God is, but know who God is. Number two, go and restore relationships that you know that need to be addressed. Take that challenge. You want to go to the next level? You want to be a better husband, a better, a better father? You want to be a better businessman? You want to make decisions and, 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 and with, a, with a clear mind and a clear mindset? Then go and restore relationships that you know that need to be restored. And if the, the, the relationships that you know that don't need to be restored, then let them be like God, deal with them at his time. But God, God is God enough to prompt that in you and to tell you in your heart to say, you know what, I need to restore this relationship. And what is restore? You know what, um, you know, when you hurt me, you know, I was really bothered. No, no, no. Mm. It's not when you hurt me. You're not, you, no, 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 look, look. I know that I messed up and I'm sorry. And if I held something against you, forgive me. Amen. If I held a grudge against you, forgive me. It's not about how you wronged me. It's about me holding this in my heart. And when you approach that person like that, boom, you're going to start to see something happen in your life. Something happening. Something, something crazy is going to start happening in your life. Why? Because God is a God who, who moves freely when there's true forgiveness. When there's true restoration. Then you're going to see your life go to the next level. Then you're going to see your ministry go to the next level. You're going to see your marriage go to the next level. You're going to see your finances go to the next level. You're going to see everything about you go to the next level. Why? Why? Because there is restoration. Amen. There is restoration. I mean, let's stand to our feet tonight. And if you are this person tonight and say, you know what? Um, maybe not everything spoke to you. 
But I know that God, God put this message in my heart today to speak to some, some of you. And it's, and it's number one again to restore. Don't let shame rob you from whatever God has for you. Don't let shame hold you back and keep you locked up and captivated in a place where I can't fulfill my calling and can't fulfill my purpose. As a husband, as a father, as a man of God, as a businessman, don't let the enemy, the enemy's shame or condemnation keep you captive. But let the grace of God tell that shame to shame off because he is great, because he is a good God. He is a great God, how we can say amen. 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 So if, if any of you need prayer tonight, you, know, you say, you know what, Pastor Man, I, I just... I just don't want to be a stand-up guy. I don't want to be a man's man, but I want—I really, I truly want to be a man of God. Amen. The leaders are here. We're here to pray for you. Amen. And I just pray that you, you know, you take this message to heart. Amen. Let's pray before I open up the altar.